right now. A father offering his forgiveness tonight. All he asks in return is to have his daughter back. We speak with him tonight as he searches for that daughter, three-year-old Lena Keel. And face to face with the flames. This right here is new video of the wildfire near Austin. That story is coming up, but first. Yeah, sorry to tell you this, but yes, the temperatures are taking yet another dive and TxDOT got those roads ready for us. Yeah, CPS Energy and SAWS says it was business as usual. The big story now, though, temperatures heading back towards the 20s tonight, actually heading for the 20s for the first time. I don't even think we got that bad last night. Adam Kasky joins us now with team coverage. Our Garrett Bergers checking in on the shelters for those who need a warm place to stay. Meteorologist Katie Blake tracking what to expect as students return to school tomorrow. But first, we're going to start with meteorologist Adam Kasky. And Adam, here's the question. Are any areas getting a, a wintry mix tonight, or is that fading out? It's starting to fade out and really fade away and move out of town. But we have a few little pockets where there's a little bit of snow in parts of the hill country, mainly Edwards County. It's really not coming down that hard. Very light in nature, a dusting out there. And then you look at the radar east of San Antonio along I-10, very, very light sprinkle activity. This is mainly just cold rain that's falling. Some of it could freeze on some of the elevated surfaces such as the guardrails or street signs, some tree limbs maybe. But also, I want to look in and around San Antonio currently. Uh, what we have in Leon Springs is just a little bit of sleet falling right now. You see a few different colors here, the pink and the green. The computer's having a hard time figuring out exactly what type of precipitation, but we've got some reports of sleet, which is basically just the little ice pellets, the little frozen raindrops. And some of that could even be mixed in with the freezing rain, but this is very light in nature. And actually throughout the entire day today, when you looked at the radar, you looked at the KSAT weather app, you thought, oh wow, it looks like it's coming down hard. Actually, it wasn't. It was a little deceiving because of the nature of our atmosphere. We're going back to 545 PM. You take a look at this around comfort. Looked like a heavy wintry mix, right? All the dark pink right there, thinking maybe some snow, maybe some ice. Actually, Katie Blake drove right through this exact radar echo earlier today. Let's go to Katie. So explain to me, you know, this looked ominous earlier, but what actually was it? Uh, it wasn't much. Uh, that's kind of to sum it up there. It really wasn't much. So photographer Bill Caldera and I were in the storm chaser this evening for the news at five and at six. So after our hit at five o'clock in Bernie, we hopped on I-10 and right about that time, Adam, we were driving up I-10 to comfort. And I thought, well, we're going to run through right through this little black batch of what looks like some freezing rain and sleet. And I knew it would be light precipitation, but it really wound up being not much more than a few seconds of some really light freezing rain. So our radar was a little deceiving today. Speaking of Bernie, that's where we saw this Cibolo uh, Creek sign. Excuse me, my numbs are maybe getting a little numb up here on the KSAT roof. Uh, and this was one of the elevated surfaces around Bernie, around parts of the hill country, maybe even across northern parts of Bear County that had a little bit of an icy glaze to them today. But overall, our roadway is just fine. And that is the really good news. So now with the light wintry mix ending tonight, our attention turns solely to how cold it will be tomorrow. Kiddos heading back to school in the morning. Here's what you're looking at as you head out the door in the morning. Our air temperatures dropping down into the 20s in a lot of spots, teens across the hill country. So a very cold start to the day. You'll want to make sure the kiddos are dressed in layers. If you need an example, here's a sweet little pup who got the memo dressed in some layers today. We appreciate you sending in not only your weather photos, but also your pet photos to us via uh, pins on KSAT.com or on the KSAT Weather Authority app. So if you took some cool photos or video today and you want to share it with us, you can do that on our website or on the KSAT Weather app. For more on what lies ahead for us weather-wise, Adam, back to you. I got to say those two basset, basset hounds, it looks like a professional shot from like a greeting card or something. I do want to talk about tomorrow morning a little bit more specifically. You get along the Rio Grande, Del Rio 29 to start your day, uh, Carrizo Springs 30, but you get up into the hill country, Kerrville, Ingram, Hunt, Bandera, Pipe Creek, likely in the upper teens, probably about 18, 19 degrees. Canyon Lake about 23, 24, and in San Antonio, we're thinking mid 20s to start the day tomorrow. So yes, cold tonight, but the wind has pumped the brakes. That's the good thing. We'll talk about how temperatures change over the weekend and in the coming days and some promising rain chances 
liquid precipitation, rain chances to talk about in a bit. All right, thank you, Adam. Let's talk about the less fortunate now. It yeah. could be a tough night for those without a roof over their heads. The city of San Antonio continues to try and link those without a home with a warm place to stay. Several warming centers were set up and they remain open at this hour tonight. Tonight, Team's Garrett Berger tagged along with one of the city's homeless outreach clinical coordinators to see how they work firsthand. He now joins us live from downtown San Antonio. So, Garrett, tell us, how were the city and the nonprofits preparing for this cold weather? The city and county have opened up warming centers that will stay open throughout the night. There are also several emergency shelters because of the cold weather that have opened up downtown at Travis Park Church, where we are now. This is one of them because with temperatures set to drop below freezing tonight, even those who might not norm normally turn to a shelter could change their minds tonight. Chantel. Hello, hello. All week. Knock, knock. Trez Scipio, a homeless outreach clinical coordinator for the city, and they do take families, has been helping to warn San Antonio's homeless residents about the approaching cold weather, which is now here. His goal is to offer them resources. These are some of the local warming centers here in San Antonio. He tells everyone about open shelters, but that's not always what they're looking for. A lot of my clients have said, no, we're not interested in shelter, even for the daytime to warm up. Uh, however, they are asking for more things such as the coats and gloves, uh, hats, things of that nature. Some people prefer braving the elements to staying in the shelters, like Chantel Thomas, a woman Scipio has been working with for several months. I tried shelters, but they, they haven't been working, so I've been staying out here. So I feel more safer out here. But spending Wednesday night in her tent was rough. I had about five blankets and coat on, shoes on. And the prospect of another cold night? had Thomas reconsidering. As long as I'm by myself, I'm all right. But like I said, it's, it's, cold. it's cold. It's cold today. It's cold. And, and I, and Especially I if, the, if the sleet and rain and everything else yeah. comes in. With a city van at the ready, Scipio gave Thomas a ride to a city warming center. We will allow you to lead the way. All right. It's not a permanent fix for Thomas's situation, but it's something. And on a night like tonight, it's enough. The city and county warming centers will stay open through noon tomorrow. The emergency shelter here at Travis Park Church is run by Corazon San Antonio, the head of which actually just told us a few minutes ago that they are full up for the, for the night. However, they are going to open up again tomorrow night for another possibly chilly time. Live downtown, I'm Garrett Burnsher, KSAT 12 News. Such a cold night to be out on the street. Well, Meals on Wheels taking a lesson from last year, last February. Today's colder weather, certainly milder in comparison, but they reminded them of the importance of planning. They're scheduled to deliver winter storm meal kits to 4,500 clients this Saturday. Now, the kits come with five meals. They don't need to be heated. There'll also be disposable hand warmers, water, thermal blankets. Now, these kits are designed to be stored on a shelf in case of a weather emergency. Meals on Wheels CEO Vincent Ferris also encourages you to keep your neighbors in mind year round. A whole lot of that is just people knowing that someone is thinking about them. Someone cares about them goes much, much farther than you and I perhaps realize because they realize then they're not alone. So check on your neighbor. It makes a huge difference. It sure does. Another way to help Meals on Wheels still needs volunteers to help deliver those emergency weather kits. If you want to register, you can sign up at mowsatx.org. Now, remember, these kits are going out to more than 4,000 customers, so they are in need of help. Registration will stay open until tomorrow afternoon. Tonight, a father's desperate plea. Now, this past month, as you can imagine, has been absolutely agonizing for the parents of three-year-old Lena Keel. She's been missing since December 20th, and despite numerous searches, San Antonio police have no idea where she is. The night team's Padre Santos sat down with the girl's father and had this to say. Leave her somewhere, yes. safe place. There's no revenge, and I, I will forgive him from my heart. Just return Lena back. That's all Ria's kill wants. He spoke with Case Sad through translator Luang Mongol. Kill says everyone in the family, especially Lena's mother, is desperate to have her back. She is very unhappy and she is very sad. 
and crying all the time. Lena's father tells us her mother was sitting right there in those steps. Lena was playing all around this area, oftentimes going down these steps, walking around the pavilion out of sight for just a few seconds. One of those times she disappeared. The Gill family keeps replaying the events of December 20th in their minds. After looking for Lena around the area and apartment, the mother called Narias, who then returned home and called police. Lena's family remembers more foot traffic than usual the day she disappeared. But there was a lot of activities happening at that time. A lot of strangers were coming to fix the building from different companies. Investigators have spent weeks searching for Lena but still have no leads. They're calling it a missing persons case, but the girl's family remains hopeful. They didn't find something that means she is alive and I, I'm hoping and I'm feeling that she will come back alive to us. They want to see her home doing what she loves, playing with makeup and inviting her friends over. She was, they were collectively doing makeup of each other. So she had the makeup tools and dolls and most of uh, she liked to wear red dresses, red traditional dress. And right now the family is asking for positive vibes, for prayers, and for tips. There's a $150,000 reward for information that leads to her whereabouts right now. Again, they're just asking whoever has her to take her to a safe place. They want to have her home before her next birthday in a month. Steve, Stefania? Wow, Patty, thank you. A lot of people, many of you, rallied in her name. And now her family is marking the new law created in her honor. What they want you to know about the I Am Vanessa Guillen Act coming up. Plus, another agency joining the investigation into a local congressman. What we're learning about the search of his home. Plus, up close and personal, one fire chief shows just how close he came to these flames in Bastrop County. Incredible. Just wait to hear how it sounded. It's next on The Night Beat. New video tonight from that fire up in Bastrop County, just southeast of Austin. A fire chief saw these flames up close on the very first day of the Rolling Pines fire. And despite all the fires that he's ever dealt with, he just can't forget how this one in particular sounded. Listen. Oh, yes. We just had a town fire jump all the way over 21. Okay. It just sounds angry, right? Yep. That's Chief Gill from the Bastrop County Emergency Services District Number Two. He posted that video that you're watching, and you could see those flames along Highway 21. That was back on Tuesday. Tonight, more than 800 acres have burned, but here's the good news: firefighters have contained it to 70 percent. The fire began as a controlled burn that obviously got out of hand. It's like those flames were roaring almost. Yeah. New details tonight in that investigation linked to a local congressman. We saw FBI agents at U.S. Representative Henry Cuellar's home in Laredo yesterday. Now a source close to the investigation says the Department of Justice's Public Integrity Office is also investigating along with the FBI. They handle cases involving elected officials, including campaign finances. A court signed off on the FBI agents entering Cuellar's home, but it's still not clear exactly what they were looking for. Cuellar's office has said they are committed to fully cooperating with this investigation. This all happening right before the March primaries. Now, you weren't alone when you grieved the death of Vanessa Guillen. It was national news. And tonight, we're hearing from the family of the late Army specialist as they recognized the I Am Vanessa Guillen Act. This was not a small task. It was really, really <clears throat> a long process, but thank God we're all here today to say we did it, we won. If you remember, Guillen died in 2020 at the hands of another soldier who also sexually harassed her at Fort Hood. More than a dozen Army officers and other soldiers are facing disciplinary actions in the case. President Joe Biden signed the legislation into law late last month, and it does a few things. One, it makes sexual harassment a crime within the Uniform Code of Military Justice. And two, it moves prosecution decisions of sexual harassment and harassment cases out of the military chain of command. Our live cam tonight along the San Antonio Riverwalk. 
one of the coolest places and tonight <laughs> one of the coldest places as you can see the grotto in the background there you see the fish hanging from underneath as the river walk heads towards the pearl it's Beautiful area, beautiful area. Um, not too much action there tonight. Understandably no. not where you want to be tonight because as you can see on your screen right there, 34 degrees out Chatham. Yeah, we're feeling the, the chill outside. Temperatures are falling off and overall tonight, you know, the primary of course concern is the pets, the plants and of course check on some people next door. But I think most pipes are going to be OK unless they're completely exposed to the elements outside and there's some kind of anomaly. Most pipes should be OK. Precipitation, it's coming to an end. Yeah, it will be cold in the 20s overnight, but it's not going to be a prolonged freeze. Promising rain chances in the days ahead. It's nice to be able to shift the focus onto some rain chances. All right, let's get right to our radar and we have still just a few little basically sprinkles of light snow out there in parts of Edwards County and Northern Valverde County. Just a little dusting like Katie and I were talking about earlier. The radar makes it look like it's coming down heavier than it really is. And part of that is the fact that it's detecting melting snowflakes in the sky. Melting snowflakes look a lot bigger to the radar than what's actually happening in reality. But still between Leon Springs, Scenic Oaks over toward Timberwood Park, Camp Bullis here as well. Just a little bit of sleet mixed in with some light freezing rain, but we're talking trace accumulations. Not a big deal, not problematic. And today, luckily, no real problems out there. This activity is gradually moving on out of here and the upper level disturbance, this big dip in the upper level flow, that's going to be passing on overnight and that's going to then clear our sky as we get into tomorrow. But we're watching this dip in the upper level flow. Edmonton, Calgary, that's where we have this next dip. Notice all the precipitation around it too. We're going to get some of that and that's going to drop our way and give us our next chance of rain. Rain precipitation of the liquid variety. <laughs> that's as we get into Sunday night. That upper disturbance drops into the four corners on Saturday. By Sunday, we start to get the energy from it. So increasing clouds on Sunday, Sunday night, early Monday morning. We're giving it a 60% chance of rain and we could use it. Of course, we've got drought stricken parts of South and Central Texas and some of that's going to linger into Monday morning, but that's really our only opportunity within the foreseeable future. Now, all right, let's talk temperatures across the state. 20s, 30s, still some 40s. Del Rio and Laredo at 42. Meanwhile, 31 Fredericksburg, 31 in Kerrville, Rock Springs, 28. Those are the cooler locations. Even look locally and right around the freezing point in Bull Verde and 31 in Bandera. Tomorrow morning, this is what we're expecting. Rio Medina, 23. Canyon Lake 24, New Braunfels 27, Helotus 25, Stinson Airport area about 30 degrees and Poteet 29 to start the day tomorrow. But by the afternoon, we're right near 50 degrees. So again, not a prolonged freeze and actually we'll have a lot of sunshine as well. Not as much of a breeze. The wind is subsiding already tonight. You're not going to notice it that much tomorrow. Saturday morning, cool in the upper 20s. Feel the chill in the air. But then by the afternoon this weekend, we'll be near 50 degrees. All right, Adam, thank you. All right, there's one particular play last night that harkened back to a Spurs great. <laughs> Manu Ginobili, who was just a wizard on assist and steals and everything else he would always do. He played with passion, and that's what we're seeing a lot from DeJounte Murray with a Manu-like performance last night, but did it get him any closer to getting any all-star top 10 votes? When we come back, we'll let you know. And Dak, find how much for his comments about the officiating coming up. Rising star DeJounte Murray is not in the top 10 in the third edition of All-Star Fan Ballot released today by the NBA. That's even after DeJounte scored his eighth triple-double of the season last night against Oklahoma City Thunder. The Spurs 118-96 route of the Thunder for just their second win in their seven-game homestand. Murray scored 23 points, dished out 14 assists, and another 10 rebounds to go along with his three steals. It's also DeJounte's 12th triple-double of his career and now puts him just two shy of David Robinson's franchise record of 14. He's playing all-star basketball, uh, you know, and he'd, he'd be in consideration if we had a better record. Uh, but he's just growing by leaps and bounds in every way. DJ's playing incredible right now, and we all just thrive off of him. So, you know, he, he does it on both ends of the floor every single night, and he likes to get it going in transition. So that's a shooter's dream, and, uh, you know, guys are just playing really hard right now.
And here's a look at the voting just released today by the NBA. Number one, over 6 million votes. Steph Curry, of course, all the way down to Devin Booker in the top five out of Phoenix. You take a look at the second half of the top ten, then you see Damian Lillard, who is out for the All-Star game because he's going to have surgery. So we need to get DeJounte in there somehow. Now, one of DeJounte's 14 assists last night was very Manu-like. It was between the leg pass to teammate Drew Eubanks, who took it in for the big-time slam. When you take a look at the replay, you'd be amazed about how he's able to thread that pass between his legs into the hands of Drew. So what did DJ think of his feet, and what was his teammate's thought? when he was the beneficiary such a great pass just having fun uh, that's that's like a big thing for me you know it's hard when you're losing you got to understand or for me I got to understand uh, it's a process you know uh, a lot of us was put in situations this year and, and getting opportunities to finally you know get to play uh, we're used to having vets around and you know now we're a young team uh, you know, so everybody's, you know, just getting opportunities and, you know, we're all new to it. Uh, but mainly that's just having fun. Uh, just trying to have fun and win basketball games. I saw him throw it between the legs and then, I, I'm not even joking when I say I was like, okay, don't mess this up. And I was just like, all right, just go up and power, power through it. I just watched it too. You can see like I hit the rim and then it went over. So I was just trying to go through contact and, and finish. But, you know, he, he was rolling. He had scored a bunch and, he was feeling himself, and I guess we're the Showtime Spurs now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, big night tomorrow night. The AT&T Center with the Spurs host of Brooklyn Nets. That'll be Patty Mills. First game back in San Antonio since he signed with the Nets as a free agent this past offseason. Patty's extremely popular with the fans with the silver and black, and not just for his play on the court, helping the Spurs win their last NBA title in 2014, but his commitment during the community, especially for what he did for San Antonio businesses during the COVID pandemic. What kind of reception are the Spurs expecting from the fans tomorrow night? And it better be loud, you know, so uh, San Antonio better come out and show out and, and show their appreciation for him. Uh, you know, he was here a long time. He's won here, and, you know, he loves this city a lot. He loved the fans. He always was engaging the fans in everything he did, whether it was playing or him in the community or, you know, giving us the history of his life. So, you know, uh, I, I would want everybody to show that appreciation for him. And you know who's also back with the Nets? LaMarcus Aldridge came out of retirement playing for Brooklyn now. He'll be back here as well tomorrow at 730. How much did Dak Prescott get fined by the NFL for his comments about officials next? Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott has been fined $25,000 by the NFL following his comments about the officiating the Cowboys 23-17 loss to the San Francisco 49ers. In particular, his comments after when he was asked about fans throwing trash at the officiating crew as they left Cowboys AT&T Stadium. As time ran out of the Cowboys comeback, in the last play, Prescott ran a quarterback draw, but by the time he took the slide and tried to get back up in time, he ran out because the umpire still has to down the ball. In fact, you can see him crash into Prescott got in the O line in order to try and get to the ball. He said credit to them when asked about the fans' actions. Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator Kellen Moore and defensive coordinator Dan Quinn both interviewed for the Vikings head coaching position today. Both are expected to meet with Miami as well. At the same time, head coach Mike McCarthy holding his first press conference since called for more than one media outlet demanding his ouster following the Cowboys' colossal collapse against San Francisco in the first round of the playoffs. Part of that collapse was the Cowboys' problem with penalties. 14 for 89 yards. That was part of their season that lost 1,000 1,103 yards and 127 yellow flags, which is second in the NFL. McCarthy says that's his number one off-season priority. We've been coaching penalties since week one. I mean, it's uh, so uh, it's it's something that you know, particularly the holding and the pre-snap penalties. Those are the two that jump off the charts. Uh, so. Uh, we, we definitely, definitely need to be much better in that area. Yeah, they look like a very undisciplined and unprepared team for that playoff venture, and that always goes to one person, the coach. Well, and they're the most penalized team in the NFL the entire year. That is It wasn't correct. a one-game no, gosh, Oh, gosh, no, not at all. Yeah, thanks, Greg. We'll be right back after this. Tomorrow morning in the 20s, bundle up at the bus stop by the afternoon will be upper 40s with sunshine this weekend. Highs near 50 degrees, better rain chances Sunday night into Monday. Right now we got it at 60%, but no big warming trend. All right, Adam, thank you. That's it for the night beat, GMSA at 430. Stay warm.